What's up, guys, and welcome back to another episode of Game Ball with your host, Matt Samantia. Today, we have one of the best offensive linemen in the country, had the second highest PFF amongst all offensive tackles. Uh, he made all ACC second team, a national champion, and college, a state champion, high school. Uh, Jordan McFadden, the man, the myth, the legend. How you doing, man? Man, just glad to be here, and I'm, I'm good, excited. Yeah, definitely. Well, you know, I had to give you a big intro. You know, you're a, you're a big time player for sure. <laughs> um, but uh, the first question I have to ask you, you know, I was requested to ask you this question. I have to start off with it. So between you and John Simpson, who has the longest dreads? <laughs> he told you to ask. You, he told you to ask that, didn't he? Nah, I, I, no comment. You know, I, I respect confidence. You know, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna snitch on anyone. So we're just gonna. Uh, I I will admit that when John was here, his were longer. But I'm gonna be honest. I think. Mine have caught his. So right now I would say mine are longer, if we're being honest. All right, if we're being honest. Was there like a inside joke between us? Like what was so uh, what's all about that? Nah, so yeah, he was obviously here before me. Um and then he had dreads. And like when he came in, everyone was like, Oh, you got dreads, be like John. I was like, No, I just wanted dreads. And then so it was always like a competition, like, oh, my hair's longer, my hair's longer. So we just always joked about it. Yeah, definitely. Definitely, man. But yeah, no, it was found that pretty funny to have to ask you. Um, but, you know, as I said earlier, when we, we did the intro, you know, you you were uh, you got a, the second highest PFF ranking amongst offensive tackles with an 89. I believe, you know, you have the I guess the second highest uh, amongst all ACC linemen since 2020. Um, you made all ACC second team. You're, you're getting recognized for all you've done. I mean, you've been a phenomenal player since you stepped on the field. But with the recognition, you know, what what's allowed you to grow into such a talented and, and great player? Uh, I would say just uh, my work ethic and then also those those guys before me, um, just like you mentioned, John, um, Tremaine, I got really close with those guys, um, lived with them. Um, so those guys really led me, um, showed me what it was like to, you know, study film, to do extra outside on your own, um, different things like that, just putting in the work myself. Um, a lot of people talk about it, but I think, you know, you really see who's been putting in work when it's time to play ball. Um, so. You know, just those things, just, you know, staying true to myself, staying true to the game and putting in the work. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, in a, I guess a press conference before this, this season in July, uh, Matt Bockers, another lineman for Clemson, he said that, you know, something that separates you is, like you mentioned, your work ethic, you're a worker, you go out there, you do all the extra things, you do everything you can. But what are those little things that you work on and those little things that you do to help you be such a great player? Yeah, um, obviously, you know, every offensive lineman wants to be as strong as possible. But, you know, what people don't th uh, really think about when it comes to offensive line is how well you can move your feet, you know, how, how good your core is, your balance, different things like that. Um, so I, I would say, you know, obviously just working on, you know, pass hit and run blocking, but just working on tiny things like uh, strengthening my core, getting my balance better, um, strengthening my hamstrings, different things like that. Mm, definitely. And do you think this is something – I guess getting stronger, do you think you pride yourself on that because of, I don't want to say disadvantage, but, you know, most linemen are a little bit taller. You're 6'2", you're 6'3". Six, six, um, so is that, is that why you work on just trying to be as strong as you can? Yeah, I, would, I definitely think that's a big part of it, just being super strong. Um, because like you mentioned, a lot of guys are 6'6", six, 6'7", six, six, um, and, you know, I don't have that luxury. So just being, you know, as strong as possible and using that uh, strength to my advantage. Yeah, and you know, you know, like we say, you're six two, where most linemen are six six, six seven. What what made you become a lineman? Yeah, how did you kind of get thrown into that situation where it's not like you know some really massively tall guy? So like, what what made you become a lineman? No, I mean, growing up, I was always kind of like the bigger kid in my like group or whoever I hung out with. Um, so like when I started playing football, I played O line. Um, anyways, but you know, just getting to high school, I was still probably the biggest kid there. Um, so obviously, just playing offensive line there. Um, and then getting here and realizing I wasn't the biggest and there's all everybody was about taller than me. Um, it was like a little discouraging. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, you know, it only matters how you play. Um, and I pride myself on, you know, just trying to do things that other other guys won't. So, you know, coming out of high school recruitment, you were you're a three star. A lot of good teams were calling you looking into you and Virginia Tech. They offered you in February, you know. I think you kind of know the question I'm going to start. I'm going to, I'm going to ask you eventually, but going through the rundown, Virginia offered you in February of 2017, July 4th. I mean, that's a way to celebrate the 4th of July. You committed to a college. You committed to Virginia Tech. Then August rolled around. Clemson, you know, you're from, you went to Dorman. You're that South Carolina kid. 
Clemson offers you. Whoa, that's that's something crazy. You know, that's that's a big thing right there. And then in December, you ended up decommitting from Virginia Tech and then committed the same day to Clemson. But, you know, what was that whole process like for you? Was it like, I guess, a hard decision? Was it a heart versus your head decision? Like, just walk me through everything with that. Uh, for sure. Um, so, obviously, Virginia Tech had offered me. And from a moment I kind of stepped on campus, I had loved it there. I was really close with Coach Fuente, Coach Vice. Um, I definitely thought, like, hey, you know, Clemson and Auburn, this is this is where I'm going. Like, I'm going to Virginia Tech. I'm solo. And then out of nowhere, Clemson um, calls me, offers me. And at a certain point in that recruitment, in my recruitment, I kind of was like, man, if Clemson did offer me, this would be such an easier decision. Like, I wouldn't have to worry about making a decision. I would just be fine, relaxed, and chilling. Um, but the more I talked to my family, the more I thought about it, um, of how special of a place Clemson is, because I grew up a Clemson fan watching all the games, different things like that. So that decision came harder and harder, and I literally did not know what to do. Um, and then just, you know, seeing – you know, obviously, Brandon Thomas, who played here, went to my high school and just seeing all the guys from my high school who has success at Clemson um, and then just being close to home made that decision, you know, easier. And then, you know, at the, at the end of the day, um, I decided to go to Clemson and I can honestly say it's the best decision that I've made. You know, I've had so much fun here, I've made uh, relationships, won a lot of big games. Um, so, you know, I'm definitely happy with my decision. Yeah. So you said, you know, Clemson, you grew up a Clemson guy. That was your team. You said if they, if they didn't offer you, for example, it'd make the decision a lot easier. Some, you know, hypotheticals, you know, if they offered you before the 4th of July, before you committed to Virginia Tech, do you think you would have committed to Clemson right then and there, like a lot earlier? Is that like? Yeah, well, I 100 percent. If Clemson would have offered me, uh, I probably would have thought about it for a while. But at the end of the day, like, I knew, like, once they offered me, I probably would have been going there, honestly. Yeah, so, you you know, they offered in August. You committed in December. Well, I mean, you know, you, as you say, it was a hard decision. You had those relationships built with all the coaches at Virginia Tech, maybe even some of the players. But why would you, why'd you, like, I guess, wait it out a little bit longer than, you know, that's like a three-, four-month period? Yeah, um, I, like I said, I really did not know what I wanted to do. And then it got to a certain point where I was like – I felt like I was so close with Virginia Tech that, you know, I was kind of letting them down in a way. Mm -hmm. um, but at the end of the day, I had to think that I'm doing this for me and I'm the one who's going to have to live with this decision. And honestly, like, to see what Clemson had done before I even got there, like winning a national championship and dominating the ACC, you know, I was like, I can't turn um, something like that down. And, you know, I've been – that decision worked out for me. Yeah, definitely. You know, there's something in these hills. I think you – I think it definitely worked out first year or year. You know, you they they went on to win a national championship. So maybe you brought back that uh, that good luck, that mojo. But uh, during the recruitment process, one of your main recruiters was your O line coach, uh, or former O line coach Robbie Caldwell. Uh, you know, he's known you for you know he's coached you for four years. He recruited you, so that's maybe in the fifth year that you've known him. He stepped down as Clemson's O line coach, as everyone knows. Uh, but what was that relationship like with him? You know, what was he like as a person, as a recruiter, a coach, just in general? Yeah, he nah. I love Coach Carl with a death. Um, he's a great man. Um, he's very transparent. Um, and that's one thing that I do like about him. Um, he's very honest with where you are um, playing. He's, you know, very honest with just about anything. And then the love for the he had the love that he has for his players off the football field, you know, it's like second to none. Um, I, I know that he didn't do anything for us. Um, there's been days, you know, we haven't seen eye to eye or you know. There might have been a little argument or something like that, you know, but at the end of the day, I knew that Coach Cole had my back. Um, and then, you know, he has so much wisdom because he's been coaching for so long. Um, and I was just like, I'm grateful that I was able to play for him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. You know, I, I spoke to uh, Colin Sadler, who was a crew from this year, about Coach Caldwell. I mean, I'm sure he knew that Caldwell was going to be leaving before everyone else, but I didn't know that, whatever. <laughs> but I asked, I asked him about him, and he told me that the thing he loved about him was that he was honest, but he was like a grandfather. He was like, he was there for you. You know, he was, he, he might, you might tell, he tells you to, uh, tells it straight to, you know, he tells you what's up with it. And I think that's really cool to see that someone like, it's like a family atmosphere, you know, yeah. like Clemson always preach. And with that, what's that Clemson culture like? I mean, you know, it's been instilled for a while, but you've yeah. been a part of it all. So what's it, what's it like? Man, it's different. And, you know, it sounds cliche, um, but like, Talking to other other friends at other universities, um, you know, 
guys talk about, you know, what it's like there and it doesn't compare, you know, and even just being in recruitment and going to different schools, you know, this is, is some genuine here, you know, people truly love to play football, truly, people truly love each other, you know, and uh, I would say, you know, it's kind of like a brotherhood here, even the coaches, you know, there's a love uh, between the players and the coaches. Um, so I would say, man, the culture here is different, you know, and it's only going to continue to get better. Mm, for sure. And, you know, this, this year, this past season, I guess you were, you became a, I guess a leader, a mentor to these younger guys. I mean, you know, this was a wild season for Clemson. You know, there's count. It was like every day, another player got injured. Another thing of adversity happened and you were, you know, you had to roll with the punches in a way. Um, but you had to kind of grow into that Clemson culture and be that culture because you're mentoring these young guys, these young players that have filled gaps and especially along the old line. So, you know, how were you able to help grow the office, the young guys and help them realize like, hey, it's OK, like it's your time and kind of mentor them this year? Yeah, I mean, it's no secret. We were definitely young. Um, then, you know, Matt Bockhorst ended up getting hurt, um, which really was devastating for him and just for the offensive line. Um, and then, you know, it was just tough and it, it was just kind of like, um, like, that's when I knew, like, I, I, I really got to step up. Um, and I would say in our room, we got guys who who care, you know, who are willing to learn. Um, and that's all you can ask for. Um, it's not going to be perfect, especially from, you know, offensive lines is a very difficult position for young guys to come in and just play and be good at, you know. And I think that's what a lot of people don't understand. Um, but, you know, those guys really, they really do care. Um, they want to win. They care about, they put in the work. You know, and, and I had to, you know, continue to preach them that they will mess up. But at the end of the day, it's about how you respond. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And, you know, going on with how you respond, Clemson start off two and two. Yeah. Tough losses right there. I mean, that Georgia game was that was a tough loss, to say the least. You know, that was that was a game that everyone, you know, I, you know, we all thought everyone thought Clemson was going to pull that out. But you bounced back, you know, went 10 and three. 11th straight season with a 10 wins or more. That's that's unprecedented. You know, that's incredible. What what allowed the team to kind of rally together and, and be able to to win eight of the last nine games? Yeah, I it's just the love that we have for each other. Like I, I know I tweeted it after after the bowl game, but you know, I've won national championships, I won ACC championships, and this is the most fun that I've had during a season with this team right we were so close um we cared so much about each other you know and you know everybody's talking about how it was like you know it was a down year in Clemson terms but you know to win 10 games you know so many other universities don't ever do that you know don't do it very often um so you know just to start out two and two um maybe four and three I think and then to finish 10 and three you know just showed you obviously the culture and then the love that we had for each other yeah, for sure. And, you know, you, you, just, you said it yourself. You tweeted it out. You, you said that this was the most one you ever had playing the game. Everyone said that. I felt like Bo Collins was yeah. tweeting it out. Mario Goodrich, I remember at, a, at the press conference of the Cheez-It Bowl, he was saying, like, he, this was, like, the year he kind of brought it all together. It seemed like everyone just had that brotherhood. But, like, what made, you know, what made you guys enjoy this year so much? Was it the adversity? Was it just bouncing back, the people counting you out? Like, what made you – Love this year so much. Yeah, I think it was all of it, you know, because at, at that point you're two and two, and it, that's not many people um, since I've been here have been two and two at Clemson, right? So that was a difficult point for the team. And I felt like around the country, a lot of people turned on us, um, kind of doubted us, counted us out. Um, and then at, at a certain point, it was that's when we realized that all we have, you know, is the people within the program. Um, who and the and the true fans who you know really never turned their back on us, but we realized we had to you know lean on each other, lean on the values of the program. Um, and then I was, you know, it was it was really exciting to see you know what we had going on. Um, you know, a lot of people really doubted us, um, but it really brought everybody closer together. Offensive linemen, defensive linemen, like everybody had a bond, and everybody you know was excited to go to battle for each other. For sure. And, you know, you wrapped up the year playing in the Cheez-It Bowl in Orlando against Iowa State. Uh, was that game different in any way in terms of just preparing for it rather than the, the last times, times you guys gone into, I guess, the, the final games of the year where there's like ACC championship playoffs? Like, what was it like preparing for the Cheez-It Bowl in Orlando, you know? Yeah. No, uh, first of all, the Cheez-It Bowl was amazing. Uh, it was super fun. But, 
you know, I even thought like, hey, you know, we're not going to the playoffs. Like everybody's just gonna, their mindset is going to be different. But, you know, yeah, I think Coach Sweeney, he even said it. Like our bowl practice were some of the best practices that we've had in a while. Like, you know, no matter if it was a cheesy bowl, the national championship, like we were excited to practice. We got after it. You know, we weren't out there long, but, you know, we we got a lot of quality reps done, different things like that. Um, so I would say the mindset, you know, didn't matter. We were excited to prove it wrong. We had just lost Coach Venables, Coach Elliott. So, you know, everybody was really doubting us then. So, you know, we just wanted to show everybody that this program is bigger than, you know, a couple of people. Um, then, yeah, I would say the the mindset within the team was was really like uplifting. Yeah, for sure. And yeah, there were some crazy moments in that game, like the like the pick six that Mario had. That was yeah. That was, I don't know. I don't even know what was going on <laughs> when we saw that. But uh, you know, what was at the end of the game, at the end of the season, like at that very moment where you guys won the game, went to the locker room. What was like the the whole emotions like where it was like you know we got the 10 wins we won the game and everyone doubted us like what was it like were all the emotions flowing in for everyone no it was like pure joy like honestly like we we usually like obviously we dance after every win um but usually we play two or three songs and we're done we literally dance play like seven songs um and like it was just like to see coach streeter and uh, coach goodwin get those wins um, it was truly, you know, just joy. Uh, Cause I think the whole off season we preached just finished. Um, and that game right there was just, we finished that game. We finished the season well. Um, and I think, you know, everybody kind of reflected in the locker room about like how much they're going to miss this team and how fun it was. But at the end of the day, everybody just had joy. Yeah, definitely. And it was, it was funny. So I was, I was at the cheese bowl. I had to uh, go and cover it for something. And I was sitting in the the press the press conference room, right, waiting for I guess the players to come out. You know, it was Coach Sweeney, DJ, and and Mario that all came out. But I was sitting in there, and I could hear the music playing from inside the locker room. And um, I remember asked Mario, I was like, "Who's on Ox?" Right, because I heard the first song I heard was by me, some song by Meek Mill. Very next song was some country song. <laughs> I was like, "I was like, who's on Ox?" Like, was that you? Like, you won the Cheese Bowl MVP. Like, do you get the did you get the privilege to play? And it's like, it was Coach Sweeney. It was, it was yeah. dad playing it. So, I mean, I thought that was very funny. You know, I thought, you know, it was like, man, these guys are turning up. They're having fun, though. They're having fun. But uh, is, is, is Coach Sweeney always the one on Ox? Like, what, what happened there? Uh, so, so that, not usually, but that particular game, like, we had we had other, like, people on the Ox before him. Um, so we were just, like, playing our music. And then, so – at practice on Thursdays, we always have this like song we listen to before practice. Like it's kind of like our little thing on Thursdays. And, you know, we kind of like that song just kind of like um, finished the season for us. Like uh, we played it, um, everybody kind of sang to it. And it was just like a good finish to that to that day. Um, mm-hmm. And yeah, that was Coach Sweeney's choice right there. That uh-huh. was it. So if you don't mind, what was the song, if you don't mind me asking? Or something um, like- I, I don't know the exact name, but it's a great day to be alive. I'm assuming that's the name of the song. Okay. It's a great day to be alive. Um, but we listen to it every every Thursday during the season. Well, that's that's great to hear. Hopefully, you'll be playing a lot more and, and uh, celebrating with it. Um, so, looking ahead a little bit to next year, you know, you decide to come back. Yeah. You, know, uh, you know, a lot of other guys said too: KJ Henry, BT Potter, uh, obviously Xavier Thomas. Um, you know, I don't know if you can speak for all of them, but you individually, like, what led to that decision? Was it you want to like why'd you decide to come back yeah obviously um you know I definitely have dreams of playing professional ball um and you know that I, that dream will come true for me um by the grace of God but it just it wasn't meant to be like I don't think it was meant for like I don't think it was in God's plans for me to leave you know so I felt like that I needed one more year and I honestly towards the middle of the season like there was a part of me that that wanted to come back anyway um just to be with those guys again um and you know just to have kj bt xt back um i think that we all have some unfinished business you know like everybody like obviously last year we finished well we won 10 games but i think that's not our standard um obviously you know and i think that we have some unfinished business um we you know we got some things that we want to handle so you know i'm excited for you know what's to come yeah, no, it's definitely going to be an exciting season. It's, it's very, it's reminding me a lot of the, 
the year when you know Christian Wilkins, Dexter yeah. Lawrence, all of them, they came back. I'm sure you're hearing that a lot too. I think a lot of people are saying that, but I think it, it might be a special year. You know, what's what's the goal? What's the goal? Is it to just win every week? What's the goal? Uh, yeah, just uh, you know, win. Obviously, we want to win every game, um, but you know, play our best game each and every week. And ultimately, I feel like if we play our best game and get better each and every week, uh, I think we will like the results. I mean, obviously, you know, everybody wants to win a national championship. There's so many factors that go into that. Um, you know, but just getting better each and every week is all I can yeah. ask for from this. For sure. And, you know, one of those factors that go into it is obviously, you know, practice, conditioning. And that's – you guys You guys are kind of in the midst of that right now. With Lift Day, I know we spoke about it a little bit, a bit earlier – but, uh, you know, a little birdie told me that Wednesday morning is going to be a big, big day for you guys. Um, I heard that uh, mat drills are on the way. So uh, you ready for that? Uh, I don't ever think that you can be ready for mat drills. I think you just show up and it happens. <laughs> um, but, no, nah, I think it's a good it's, – it, it's exciting. We get our whole team back together um, just to kind of work and kind of, you know, kind of set the mindset for this upcoming season. Um, I, I can't say that I'm super excited about it, you know, but, you know, I think it'll be good. Yeah. So this is going to be your, your fifth year doing it with Clemson, um, with the Matt drills. Do you have any advice to the younger guys coming in? They, do you think they're ready for it? Um, I would say the biggest thing is like, you're going to get tired either way, but I feel like, you know, obviously it's the same thing in game. Uh, when you get tired, that's when you got to really focus the most because I think, where people go wrong is they mess up a drill. And when you have to start it over, that uh, kind of messes up your day. So, mm -hmm. you know, just really, you know, focus when you, when you get tired. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Well, that sounds like a, sounds like it'll be a little brutal first start to it, yeah. but we'll see how it goes. You know, I, I wish you the best of luck with that. I think that's going to be the, the hardest part of the year for you is oh. surviving mat drills right there. Most definitely. Yeah. So, you know, looking back on, I guess 2018, you, you didn't really get any playing time. Just you're a true freshman. You know, you, you, no one expected that because you have a good offensive line there. But you were still kind of there to be a part of the national championship and just see all these guys working. But, like, what was, what was that year like for you, just, just like, watching it all? Yeah. And, uh, what was your big takeaway from it all? Um, no, that year was exciting as well. Um, just to come – I basically – on that team, we basically had a bunch of pros with – Christian, Clee, Dex, AB, um, Isaiah, like the whole defense. And then obviously you have Trevor, T. Higgins, the whole offensive line. Like we that team was a pro team. Like we had a ton of pros. Um, and just like I didn't realize how lucky I was to be a part of that team at first. Um, but to just, you know, be able to watch, you know, how they prepared each and every day, each and every week, you know, was honestly amazing. Like you know, we pretty much dominated almost everybody. And then to get to the national championship and, like, as a kid, you grew up, like, beating, wanting to beat Alabama and you beat Alabama like that. Like, that was a special moment. Um, and I didn't think that I appreciated it at the time as much as I should have. But, like, now, looking back, like, I really, like, I'm grateful and appreciative of that moment. For sure. And you said you're appreciative of it. You also won a state championship in high school. Now, I know it's going to sound a little weird of a question to ask. Which one meant more to you, winning the state championship in high school with Dorman or winning the national championship with Clemson? I'm a good – listen, I love my high school, but <laughs> I'm going to have to say the national championship uh, just because, you know, you put in so much work to get there, um, everybody in the program. Um, and just, like, to be on the mountaintop of college football, you know, while everybody's kind of watching, wanting to be there, um, that's – nothing like it you know so i would have to go with the national championship mm -hmm. so you know you you said that or you obviously got to play along with you know john simpson tremaine Aikman, some some great guys jackson carmen you know who was who do you think the the best lineman you've played with has been that's gone through clemson if you had but you don't you know you could you could play the card oh they're all great you know you don't you know, it's up to you i i'm not gonna I'm not going to be the one upset with you. I'm not one of those, one of those guys, but yeah. who do you think the, the best one was? See, that's a, see, I don't think I can answer that question uh, because, you know, John and Tremaine are like my older brothers. Uh -huh. uh, and then Jackson is like, a, you know, one of my brothers as well. So, uh, you know, I'm just going to say it's between those three. 
and I won't answer between who, but between. Right. Yeah, we'll see. We'll flip a coin or something. I don't know. Um, moving on from that, though, you know, you do go against the best defensive lineman in yeah. college, you know. I mean, obviously in the games, but, like, you, you go against the best defensive lineman in practice. You know, right now you have Brian Breezy, Miles Murphy, KJXT. You know, you mentioned there was Dexter Lawrence. I don't know if you're actually having to block them in practice as a freshman, because that would be that would be a disaster. But uh, yeah, just be like, well, that'd be crazy to go into. But who do you think like the the hardest the hardest one you've had to practice against was? Um, so so my freshman year, like I obviously redshirted, so I was on the scout team, and then um, obviously I was going against uh, Cleveland most of the time, so like. That was a challenge itself, and I think that that also really helped me get better. Um, so, you know, Clee was definitely really, really good. Like, he's definitely up there, but I don't want to take it away from any of those guys. But all I know is one time I was trying to block Dexter, and he literally took one arm and, like, threw me, you know, like two feet across the field. And after that moment, I just never wanted that again. <laughs> um, but, you know, that's a tough question as well because, you know, I go against – like Miles is pretty much on my side 24-7. So mm-hmm. I, I go against him pretty much 85, 90% of the time. Um, so we definitely have our battles, you know, and he's a special player. Um, so I don't know if I can answer that question either because KJ Henry's my roommate, Miles is my roommate. So I don't know if I can, you know, answer those questions. Yeah. yeah. You know, I apologize. <laughs> all those guys are special players and they will play on Sunday all right well I guess that's a, a good enough question right there but uh you know you mentioned Dexter Lawrence he basically threw you right there but what was that moment did anyone like say anything or the coaches did the coaches say anything to you like what was that I mean I, they didn't really say anything because I I mean I'm assuming they've seen that before from um but you know Dexter's like the bit one of the biggest people I've seen like mm-hmm. ever like six five six six three how much ever um and just like pretty much rock solid like there's not much fat on that man honestly so like he's one of the biggest people i've like ever seen on the football field yeah yeah and now he's playing for the giants playing on sundays like everyone else on that d line yeah but, um you know you you got to play with trevor lawrence like you mentioned and he's generational talent number one pick for the jags obviously but what was it? What was like? I guess the moment for you when you like were like, "This guy is like." I like. Was there a moment when you saw him in practice and like, "This this guy's legit." Like he's an incredible talent. Or was there anything that just made you like your jaw drop and be like, "Whoa!" Like I've never seen a quarterback do that before. Yeah. Um. You know, obviously growing up, like watching the Taj Boys and then being able to see Deshaun Watson, and then Trevor comes in, like, you know, he just came in doing the same things basically. So. You know, that time for me, like, he made a throw to Hunter Renfro against Georgia Tech for a touchdown. Um, and that moment, I was like, yeah, that's crazy. Like, he's that guy. And then, like, I, like obviously, you know, how Tre- you know how good he is. Like, he's Trevor Lawrence. Mm-hmm. Um, but I know, like, probably a couple months ago, I was just, like, I was with some of the guys, and I was – we were watching highlight videos. We watched a highlight video of Trevor. And, like, some of the throws he made – um, like you don't you didn't think about the time because there were so many, but like he made so many like great throws. But the one that kind of made me like be like, yeah, he's that guy was kind of that throw to the end zone to under for us against against Georgia Tech, I would say. You know, you also play with Travis Etienne, another phenomenal player, running back, also in the Jags. With Travis, you know, you you got to block bro. Like what was what was it like playing with Travis Etienne? Like he's like he's special, bro. Like he is like super special. Um, to do break all the records he did just like tells you. Um, but to you know actually watch the film and watch like him, like squeeze through the holes, break those long runs, outrun people, um, kind of run through people. Like man, it's like you can't put it in words how like good Travis was. Like you just have to like sit there, watch, and be amazed because, like, Travis was – he's probably one of the, like, best players I've ever played. Like, he is a special talent. Mm-hmm. Definitely. You know, and right now, this – I guess this past year, you know, you got to play still with two tremendous running backs, with Kobe Pace and, and Will Shipley. Um, what, what are they like on the field, too? Yeah, now nah, they're some dogs as well. Like, I, I, people – I don't know if people, I guess, kind of slept on them or maybe thought they wouldn't be as good, but, like – 
Like those guys are like Kobe is a guy who can run through people, run past people. And obviously you've seen Will Shipley run past people. Yeah. Um, those so those two, like they're great running backs. And you know, I think both of them will be have great careers and will definitely be playing on Sundays. Um, but one guy I want to shout out is Phil Moffa. A lot of people people were able to see a glimpse of him this season. Um, but he like he's different as well. Like he will have a great career. He's a guy who all he, he's a worker. You know, just like the other two, you know, and I think a lot of people slept on him, but I'm, I'm telling people like now, like um, Phil Moffa will, will be a great running back. Yeah, he's he's pretty fast, too. Uh, he's pretty fast. I'm ready that I want to say 62 yard run this year, yeah. too, which was, yeah. I guess it's coming out party, but he's like, <laughs> he is, he is pretty good right there. Um, you know, going to, back to 2020, you know, that was that was the year with COVID. That was the year you ended up playing Ohio State in the playoffs. But there's two games I want to talk about in particular. And it was the BC and then the Notre Dame game. You know, obviously Trevor got COVID and it was like, it was crazy. Like, no one, no one knew what was going on. And Clemson was like, the, the, the place was on fire. Everyone was like, what is happening? What is going on? Like, it's, everyone was losing their mind. Exactly. You know, as, as a player going through that all, like, you know, nobody knew what to expect with COVID. Like, that was just a weird year altogether. Sure. But like, how are you? You guys obviously had a great comeback win against BC. Narrow defeat to Notre Dame, which, you know, I we saw what happened in the ACC championship. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But what was that all like where it's like, yo, by the way, Trevor can't play. DJ's coming in. You know, as you as an offensive lineman, how were you? How was, what was your reaction? What was the team's reaction to all that? Yeah, so we were sitting there um, and, like, it had been going around the facility, but, like, nobody was really sure. And Coach Sweeney comes in the meeting, like, yeah, Trevor has COVID. Like, Coach Sweeney's, like, acting like nothing's wrong, right? So, yeah, Trevor has COVID. He can't play. But he was like, the good thing is we have DJ. And he was like, I went to go find DJ and tell him he was starting this week. And he was in there watching film. So, like, that just tells you who DJ is. Um, but I can honestly say, like, I was not scared with DJ behind me. Like, mm -hmm. um, he had been put in the work. Obviously, he's a great player. Um, he had been put in the work. And I knew, like, the offense we had. You know, we had Trav, you know, and I knew it was going to be tough. Like, it's not going to – you don't – like, losing a player like Trevor is always going to be tough, right? So, um, but in my mind, I was like – I didn't lose any sleep. Like, I knew we had DJ. I knew we'd be fine. And he went in those games, and he did – like, he played amazing. Um, as good as you could want a quarterback to play, mm -hmm. especially, you know, his first two games ever. Um, yeah, he played as good as, as a quarterback could play, and I like – it was exciting. Even though we lost Notre Dame, like, it was exciting to watch what he had did. Definitely. I mean, those were crazy games. Those were spectacular. The BC game, you know, I was I was able to be one of those, like, 20,000 20, people that were allowed into the stadium, which was which was cool, I guess. Um, yeah. <laughs> but it was a crazy game. You know, you got down early. The lead was kind of slipping. I want to say it was, like, 28 to 7 at one point. Something like that. Comeback victory. Like, how, how crazy was that game where it was just, like, the first one? It was just, like, what was that like? Yeah, like – we knew, like, we always, you know, think we're going to win. Like, we have that mindset. And the one thing Coach Reno will say is, like, don't lose to Clemson. Don't lose to yourself. And I think that when we don't when we don't win, that's usually the case. We we, we don't we beat ourselves. Um, we knew, like, we came out, you know, played ball um, and just had that confidence that, you know, that game could be won. Um, and I think that, like, that game as well shows you, like, our culture, you know, and, yeah. and the belief we have. Definitely. What was what do you think the craziest game you've been a part of in your career has been with Clemson? Craziest game. Or just like most exciting or um personally. I'm trying to think of the games this year because some of those games were exciting as well. The Wake um, game was cool. Yeah, Wake was definitely like an amazing game. Like that was just kind of a bringing it all together game. Mm -hmm. um, Wake, I would say from this season. It might have been Louisville, like okay. on the road, in the cold, and to like sit on the sideline and obviously watch your defense get four straight stops on the goal line. Like mm -hmm. that right there, like we we definitely danced it up in the locker room. Like that was a special moment. Mm -hmm. um, then I would say from last, like last season when Trevor and them were here, um, definitely the AC Championship was fun. Obviously, um, 
And then we played Miami, and it was raining a little bit. Yeah, um, that, yeah. that that game was definitely fun to play. Like I had a lot of fun playing in that game. Yeah, for sure. When they uh, when that end of the first half, that blocked field goal kind of shifted tides, but then it got yeah. it got better. Yeah. yeah, that game was pretty wild. Uh, so you know you you able to to run down the hill. You know every home game, special moment. People dream about doing that. Like, what was, like, the pure excitement of it the first time you did it? And do you still have that same, like, feeling, like, of, I don't even know, like, getting butterflies of just running down the hill when you do it? Yeah, so the bus ride, like, over there, I'm just, like, super quiet, silent, almost. And, like, like I think when I get on the bus, I get butterflies all the way until the, the first now I play. Um, so, like, I'm riding on the bus, just silent, got my eyes closed and just breathing. Um and like getting to the hill and then hearing, especially like this season, full stadium, um, getting everybody, like hearing everybody cheer, um, like it's nothing but like butterflies. And I would say the biggest thing is making sure I don't fall down the hill. Cause I don't see people fall and it's not pretty. Um, but yeah, no, nah, it's just a special feeling. You know, I'm glad that I'm able to experience it, you know, and it's something that I do not take for granted um, because, you know, so many people would like to do it. Um, but in that moment, just I just have pure butterflies. Mm, definitely. You know, I was switching, switching ties a little bit. You know, you, you played basketball in, in high school. I want to say just until your junior year. You're a little bit of a hooper. You know, you did pretty well for yourself right there. Dorman is a powerhouse basketball school. Maybe, <laughs> maybe you brought that. You brought the football and basketball. Um, do, you, do you enjoy playing basketball on the side? Like, are you allowed to? Like, what's up with all that? Yeah, no, nah, we definitely, uh, like, we definitely would go to fight, you know, and play basketball. Um, a decent amount off season. We'll, we'll shoot outside in our in, our outside court of the facility. Um, but not nah, like I don't play as much anymore. But like no, nah, in high school, like I loved to play basketball. Like I thought I was going to the NBA. Um, and, and, like I grew up playing basketball. Like this is what I want to do. Um, uh -huh. so, yeah, I always loved to hoop. Yeah, what would your like younger self like say if you told him like, hey, you're gonna be a lineman for for football and offensive tackle? No, nah, I would have said, like, no way. Like, I, I literally believed that I was playing college basketball and then to the NBA until I was, like, ninth, 10th grade. Like, yeah. I definitely thought I was playing ball. Well, if you ever want to play an intramural game with me now, we're, uh, we're looking for some some guys right now. I, I might come out. I might have to. Hey, we got, our, we got our, our second game Sunday at 7. So, I'm just putting, I'm putting it out there. I'm just letting you know. <laughs> I bet. I'm just letting you know. Um, so, my, my last couple of questions are to kind of, you know, End it all. My first one being the South Carolina rivalry. Crazy, you know, a little bit one-sided, right? But it's always emotions running hot. You know, it's a rivalry game. What's what's it like being able to participate in that, especially being from South Carolina yourself? Yeah, no, being from South Carolina myself, like, I've never, like, really liked South Carolina. Like, I, like obviously, growing up a Clemson fan, like I mentioned, like, you just didn't like South Carolina. So, mm -hmm. you know, coming to Clemson, I already knew, like, what that robbery meant and we have so many guys from South Carolina who already know what that robbery means um and just like obviously not losing to them is like a big mark box I want to check um so yeah no I think you know I want to dominate them as long as possible I want to win as long as possible against them um but I would say this like this year going to their stadium our defense getting the shutout you know and, and playing the way we did was like that was one of the, that was a very fun experience. Like it was super fun. Yeah, well, you know, this 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 coming year, you know, it's, they're coming, they're finally coming to Clemson. You're gonna play them at home. It's gonna be a big game. It's gonna be a crazy game. You gotta ready to preserve preserve a couple streaks you have right now with you know, having lost a home game, having yeah. lost to South Carolina. You ready for all that? Yeah, and no, I'm excited, you know, definitely like I love playing at home anyway, like playing in front of our fans. We have our fans are amazing. Mm -hmm. um and like they always show up no matter who it is it's always allowed um but to be able to you know not to carry on a streak of not losing the game at home and then just carry on a streak of you know beating Carolina mm -hmm. at home like those two games are like those two things are special to me so you know something I definitely want to get done yeah for sure and being a lineman crazy stuff go down on the line before the play starts a lot of talk a lot of stuff happening you know back and forth um but what's what's probably like? Do you have any crazy stories about you lining up a tackle or something, and them to, the, the opposing team saying something to you, or you saying something to them? What happened with all that? Yeah, like 
he had a, in the trenches is it's a it's different um like a lot of people you don't know it, you don't really know unless you played it um mm-hmm. but there's a lot of that going on there between us communicating and like defense communicating and then just like pure talking zone um mm-hmm. like there's definitely been a fair share of you know talking going back and forth with the opposing teams D line and our O line. Um, but at the end of the day, we're all competitive. Uh, and like, you know, especially when you're playing at a high level and competing at a high level, you know, there's bound to be things that are said and done. So, you know, I just take it with a grain of salt and realize that, hey, at the end of the day, it's just a football game. Yeah. Um, I, you know, it's just I me. Mean, I actually have fun doing this. So, yeah. 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 Who's the who's the craziest, I guess, trash talker on the team? Who do you think it is? If you, I mean, I, I this might be one of those another one of those questions. You're like, oh, I don't know, like I can't answer. That. But who do you think the craziest trash talker is? Um, I see on offense. Um, like there's not like I know Matt Barkhorst used to talk like he was he was kind of our guy. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, but on defense. Um, might be somebody like you know Rook or somebody like Booth was a guy who played with like a lot of confidence. You know he he let people know that. Um, yeah. so that's one thing I always liked about him. But um, you know I I'm a chill guy until like someone's you know starts with me. So I pretty I'm pretty chill until you you just end it off. You don't start a fight. You just end the fight. I was thinking. Mm-hmm. So this question I, I I looked into it. I gotta say craziest thing i've ever read in my life probably one of the spooky fact about you i don't even know if you know the answer to this so you've you've played nearly 2000 snaps in college football i want to say like 1967 something like that yeah and you know maybe you know the answer i'm gonna actually take a guess but do you know how many flags you've gotten in your career in college football for clemson uh i would say i know i got one against georgia might be two there you go. Bingo. It's only two. You've only gotten two flags. I can't remember. The other one. I know I got one against Georgia, but I can't remember the other one. Uh-huh. Well, why? Like, how are you how are you so disciplined? You know, like you said, there's trash shot going on. You're listening to see what the quarterback's calling. And maybe he's doing cadence, but he's hiking the ball. Like, how, how are you so disciplined? Not like, getting a false start. It's not getting holdings. Like, yeah, that's impressive. No, nah, I like I honestly like my high school coach, O-line coach was like amazing. And like he really taught me a lot, like so much about the game um, that helps with that. And then, you know, like I want to win so bad. Like I am motivated to win. Like I don't like to lose at all. Mm -hmm. Um, And so, you know, I just try to help, like help my team, you know, and get my job done the best way possible within the rules, you know, so you know, I just try my best uh, to do things legally and not cost my team penalties because, um, you know, yards and touchdowns are so hard to come by. You know, so, you know, trying to overcome things because of me is not fair to other guys on the field, you know, so I try to just do my best. Yeah, definitely. You know, what happened in that Georgia game? Was it like anything? I, I jumped off sides. Like, I think it was like a third and long and they brought their speed rushers in. I think I was trying to get an early, an early start and I think I, I think I moved early. Well, never again. Never again. There you have it right there. Um, Jordan, I, I had a great time speaking with you. Is there any final thoughts you want to end with? Anything you want to say at all? Uh, Clemson, anything in general? Um, no, I would. And I just want to say I appreciate you for having me, first off. Um, no, I had a great time, you know, and, and to, like, all of our fans out there, you know, I thank you guys for, you know, staying with us through a, you know, a difficult season, you know. Um, but I'm excited for what's to come, um, and and just want to say thank you guys for all your support.